Last week was very birdy for me. I talked about Conquest of the Crystal Palace, which has these really annoying bird enemies. Not only that, but Duck Hunt turned 31 years old. It was originally released April 21st, 1984 on the Famicom. And for some reason, I just couldn't stop thinking about birds after that. And then I realized, dang, there's a lot of birds in video games. In fact, some of my favorite gaming memories involve birds. It's kind of weird. So I thought it might be fun to recollect some of my favorites. These are my top 10 birds in video games. Ninja Gaiden is a classic action game on the NES that was one of the first to use cinematic cutscenes to tell a story, and the gameplay was fast-paced and intense. It was one of my favorites growing up, but there's one enemy in this game that will drive you absolutely insane. The birds. You first come across them in stage 3, and these birds are relentless. They sway back and forth, dive-bombing you every chance they get. Not only that, but they take away three life bars every time they hit you. These birds deal more damage than bullets from this guy's submachine gun. I've always wondered what types of birds they are. I've heard it's an eagle, but I don't think that's right. It looks more like a hawk to me. Regardless, the birds from Ninja Gaiden make the list simply for being notoriously difficult to deal with. I believe anyone who has played Ninja Gaiden will agree. As a child, the first console I could ever call my own was the Game Boy, and on that console I had an awesome game called Kirby's Dream Land 2. Traditional Kirby games have you inhaling enemies and inheriting their unique powers. Dream Land 2 added even more to the mix by having unique powers with three different animal friends, and my favorite is an owl named Ku, who carries Kirby in his talons. Ku's name may come from the Japanese word Kuuki, which means air, or perhaps the word Ku, which means to eat. Kirby does a lot of that. Of course, he could also just be named after the sound a pigeon makes. Ku is my favorite of the animals because of his ability to fly, his use of powers, and his awesome theme music, which you're hearing right now. He appears in a few more Kirby games and even in the anime series, but I'll always remember him most for his appearance in Kirby's Dream Land 2. In the early 80s, before Konami completely self-destructed, they made a few games featuring a cute penguin named Penta. First, there was Antarctic Adventure, followed by Penguin Adventure, which happened to be the first game the legendary Hideo Kojima worked on. But the game I remember Penta the most in is Yume Penguin Monogatari, a game on the Famicom that never saw release outside of Japan. It's a cute, fun platformer with a unique premise. Penta is dumped by his girlfriend because he's become too fat, and she runs off with another penguin. You've got to traverse through the stages and win her back. Rather than a life bar, you have a fitness meter. If you get hit, you gain weight. As you defeat enemies or collect diet drinks, you slim down. You have to beat the level within a certain amount of time, and your fitness meter has to be past this heart. It's a blast to play, and one of my favorite retro games. But Penta is memorable to me because I first found out about this game from my late friend Justin Carmichael, also known as Ju Wario. The first episode I ever watched of his show was all about penguin games, and it featured Yume Penguin Monogatari. So this selection is more of a personal one for me. Whenever I play this game, I think of him. I miss you, buddy. Ah, Duck Hunt. I feel like everyone has played Duck Hunt at least once in their lives. It's the essential zapper game on the NES. Obviously, the object of the game is to shoot the ducks. Your dog friend helps gather them up, but also mocks you if you happen to miss all the targets. Did you know that you can use a second controller with this game to control the ducks? Makes it a little more challenging, I must say. I bet you show this picture to almost anybody, and they will instantly know what it is. The ducks evoke extreme nostalgia of the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the zapper gun, and that is why they made the list. It's a well-known fact that ostriches can't fly, unless you are the ostrich from Joust. Released in arcades in 1982 by Williams Electronics, Joust had you playing as a knight riding a flying ostrich who must defeat enemies riding buzzards. 
the game was unique in that you had to continuously press a button to flap the wings of the bird, an early use of physics in video games. The game's creator, John Newcomer, wanted to do something different than controlling a spaceship. He wanted to appeal to a mass audience and let people feel like they could fly. After looking at his options, he chose birds, and was heavily inspired by mythology. Joust is a classic, and was such a unique game for its time. Nintendo even released a clone of the game, known as Balloon Fight. Joust is a big deal, and that's why the hero's ostrich is number six on my list. In the late 90s, I was all about Pokémon. I was fully caught up in the hype. The game, the cards, the TV show, everything. In the game, you are challenged to catch them all. Most Pokémon you can see multiple times, but there were a select few that only gave you one chance to capture them. Not only that, but these were powerful Pokémon, and some of them were birds. Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres. Trying to capture these Pokémon were big tests as a child. They were all located deep in dungeons, so they weren't easy to get to, and you had to be well prepared. They also actually appeared on screen, rather than being a random encounter. It was kind of intimidating, and I remember these meetings so vividly. I always saved my game right before each fight, just in case I messed up. Now, there are tons of bird Pokémon, and I even considered more for this list, but the legendary birds and the experience of capturing them is a much bigger deal, so they make the list at number five. In The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, you'll come across these chicken-like creatures known as Kukos. They seem harmless enough, just a bunch of stray chickens wandering around. Out of curiosity, or maybe accidentally, the player discovers that, hey, you can attack these things. All of a sudden, Doom. Kuko started as a fun little easter egg, but now they are a staple of the Zelda series, appearing in just about every game. They even make an appearance in the spin-off game, Hyrule Warriors, as well as Super Smash Bros. Anyone who has played the Zelda series knows about Kukos, and also knows not to tick them off. In the Star Fox series, you control Fox McCloud as part of a four-person squadron to take down the evil Andros. There's Peppy, the wise leader, Slippy, the young mechanic, and then there's Falco who is, quite frankly, a jerk. Yep, Falco is kinda mean, and he has an ego. He has no problem reminding you of how much better you could be doing. We're gonna break through that fleet. Is that the best you can do? But deep down inside, we all kind of love and appreciate Falco. He may have an ego, but he does help you out a lot in the game, finding you alternate routes during levels. He's also kind of a motivator while playing Star Fox. You always want to prove to him that, yeah, I am a better pilot than you. One of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64 is the platformer Banjo-Kazooie, which stars Banjo, a simple brown bear, and his bird partner, Kazooie. What's interesting is, the character of Kazooie was born out of necessity. Originally, the game was only going to star Banjo, but when the creators wanted to add features like double jump and running faster, it looked weird, so they gave him a sidekick. While Banjo is nice and easygoing, Kazooie is sarcastic, witty, and loud. She's also my favorite character in the game, and her lines are some of the funniest. Kazooie alone gives the game so much personality, and that makes her a top choice on this list. However, there is one more bird that takes the top spot. Out of all the birds in video games, none can stand above the fictional flightless bird from the Final Fantasy series, the Chocobo. The Chocobo originally appeared all the way back in 1988 with Final Fantasy II. Since then, it's been a mainstay pretty much every game. They usually hang out in forests, and can be used in a variety of ways. Sometimes you can ride the chocobo as a mount to get around the world. Other times, it's an enemy you encounter. In Final Fantasy VII, chocobos are an integral part of the game, as you can participate in chocobo races, and even... chocobo breeding. Ooh. In Final Fantasy XIII, the character of Saz has a baby chocobo who hides out in his afro. 
Chocobos proved to be so popular that Square Enix put out a few titles centered around the bird, such as the Chocobos Dungeon games. Any Final Fantasy fan will also instantly recognize the catchy Chocobo theme song, which has stayed the same since the birth of the character. The origin of the Chocobo is somewhat of a mystery. We know that they were created by Final Fantasy II director Koichi Ishii, but the rest is all speculative. Hiromichi Tanaka, who worked at Square Enix for a number of years, thinks they came from a chocolate ball candy made by the company Morinaga. A bird named Kyoro-chan serves as the candy's mascot. They may also be inspired by the horse claw birds from Hayao Miyazaki's Naushika of the Valley of the Wind, which were based on the extinct Gastornis bird. I honestly can't think of another bird more memorable or more popular, and for that reason the chocobo is my number one bird in video games. Do you have a bird that you think should have made the list? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for this episode of Game and Historian. Thanks for watching.